Hey everyone, let's talk about a very interesting concept of analysis of variance now for hypothesis testing. So I'm going to use analysis of variance. And also known as ANOVA. And uh, there are two problems which are related to it one way and two way ANOVA. I'm going to write it here one way ANOVA and two way ANOVA. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to straight away start with the problem of one way ANOVA. And probably in another video I'll share about two way ANOVA. And we are going to understand it by under doing a problem. So uh, let us let us assume a situation where exactly there are three drug manufacturers, three pharmaceutical companies, company A, B, and C, and all these three pharmaceutical companies are actually uh, they are in process of developing a drug or uh, a tablet which controls the blood pressure or probably cures the headache or whatever let's let's talk about the blood pressure control and they subject tested this particular tablet on uh, uh, i would say three people repeatedly or probably you can think about nine people and let me fill up the table first then i'm going to explain you the entries it is let's say two three five and then it is uh, three four three and then I've got something called four to six. And, uh, okay. Let me just put it in a proper sequence. And uh, I've got uh, three people here: first person, second person, and third person. So probably this drug is given to three different people, and that's their results, right? So, uh, okay, that's their results. That is first person, that is second person, and that is third person. And probably the first person first given with drug A, then with drug B, and then drug C. And when he has been given drug A, then he shows a blood pressure fluctuation of two units. When he has been given with drug B, his blood pressure fluctuation shows three units. Drug C shows a blood pressure fluctuation of five units. And same way when drug 2 and 3 are given, these are the blood pressure fluctuations are seen. So if I see this figure 4 right here, it is actually a blood pressure fluctuation which is actually observed in uh, in person 2 when he's been given with drug B. Uh, so that's how this table is. And uh, if I uh, try to think about my initial hypothesis here is, then initial hypothesis here is that average change in blood pressure due to drug A is equal to change in blood pressure due to drug B and equal to average change in blood pressure due to drug C. While my alternative hypothesis is, you can simply write that H0 is not true. Either I will write this or you probably keep on writing it that mu A is not equal to mu B or mu B is not equal to mu C. Or you probably would like to write that mu, um, you know, A is not equal to mu C. Or you can simply write H0 is not true. So analysis of variance is used when there are more than two series. If there are two series, let's say if I was testing mu A is equal to mu B, I can use either a simple Z test or T test. But we use analysis of variance because alpha keeps on increasing. That means if I am having uh, this particular problem, so I can simply perform this problem by testing. Uh, this, this, or this, that means three T tests or three Z tests, depending on the sample size I can use. But every time I'm testing at a 5% level of significance and keeps on mounting. So this, this creates a lot of problems. So analysis of variance comes in very handy. So I'm going to use the case when there are more than two series are to be compared. Now, uh, when I'm going to solve this particular problem, what I'll be doing is I'll be filling up a table of analysis of variance. So I have created an alternative hypothesis and I'm going to check it at 5% level of significance. And we will definitely be going with those fixed steps of hypothesis testing. 
step one is this step two is alpha is 0 0.05 and uh, um, then third is using the test statistics so i'm going to use averages throughout and uh, let let me understand also that exactly how uh, you know so i'll write it at a different place because i have to use real state very very wisely in this particular problem because it is going to be a lengthy problem and i want to finish it up on one slide so i'm going to pick up alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and uh, what are the critical values i'm going to use a task called f test f distribution at 0 0.05 and uh, then i'll be completing it a little later that, that how i'm going to see the degrees of freedom and what will be the f critical value here but i'll be filling up this particular table and uh, now in next step i'm going to fill up this particular table for calculating these uh, all all uh, the things so these are called sources of variation uh, sources of variation and one is called amongst and other is called within that's total so what is among so if you see the same person first showing different reactions to di different responses rather to different drugs so for drug a his blood pressure fluctuation is two units for drug b it is three and for drug c this is five so that means there is amongst amongst means amongst three groups group a group b and group c that means group one group two group three so there is a fluctuation amongst the groups for the same person so that is what amongst is about and there is a within fluctuation that means same drug is given to three different people and that is exactly the fluctuation here this is actually called an experimental error within is called an experimental error and amongst is called a treatment effect so i i observe the variation in two directions one is to the rows that is called amongst also called as treatment effect so you can write it a treatment effect treatment effect and then the other is i i calculate uh, the variation which i am calculating within a particular group within that's called experimental error experimental error so uh, i'm going to calculate this variation in two ways so for amongst we call this thing as ssa that means sum of squares amongst SSW is going to be sum of squares within. Then I'm going to calculate degrees of freedom here, which is the easiest calculation. Then I'm going to calculate mean sum of squares, which is a mean sum of squares amongst mean sum of squares and SW uh, within. And here I'm going to calculate an F ratio. It would be MSA divided by MSW. And on the basis of this calculation, I'm going to figure my results out. So let's let's start doing some stuff here. So degrees of freedom are pretty easy. Amongst, if you see, there are three groups, one, two, three. So three groups, if I, so there are these degrees of freedom are three uh, minus one, that is equal to two. So if there are C groups, and the degrees of freedom are c minus one here in among if you see uh, the total then there are total nine observations so my degrees of freedom are here is going to be n minus one that means nine minus one nine minus one and that is exactly eight and if i see this is total so this value is supposed to be six so this is n minus c and that is equal to six one way to see these degrees of freedom other way you want to calculate it you can see that uh, this column has three observations so first you know, medicine is given to three different people so degrees of freedom are two here in second column it's also two in third it's also two so two plus two plus two is uh, six right n minus c this is an easiest calculation i can easily do that uh, and uh, let's let's uh, understand now the most difficult choices are to calculate SSA and SSW. So I'm going to use a different color here. First, I'll see what are the different formulas. So I'm going to plug, put the formulas here. For SSA, 
that in sum of squares amongst the formula is given by something like this sum of tj square divided by nj minus gt square divided by n and for ssw the formula is actually given by gt uh, sorry I'll, I'll write it this way just to write it in it up okay it is actually some sum x i j square minus t j square um, divided by n j so looks a little bit complicated but it is not much so what is tj so i'll be doing calculations now and i'll be trying to see how exactly the things process so what is tj t is the sum of columns so tj is a column j is the column so what is t for total j is column n is the sample size gt is the grand total of all these values and is the sample size the total sample size xij is if row j -th column that means square of each value let's start calculating let me calculate ssa first i'm using ssa calculation here and if you see ssa calculation it is tj square so first columns total it is 9 if you see that and the the second column total is also 9 and if you total the third column it is 14 the column totals are given so these are tj's so what is going to be tj square by n so let's see it is going to be 9 square divided by 3 plus uh, 9 square divided by 3 plus 14 square divided by 3 minus so this this is the first part of SSA formula and this is tj square by n minus gt square grand total square by n so grand total is sum of all these 2 plus 3 plus 5 3 plus 4 plus 3 so that is that is exact 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 4 plus 2 plus 6 so if you see this total it is actually 32 so it's a square divided by n n is the total sample size which is 9 in this case so there are 9 observations if you solve this uh, entire thing here so you're going to get tj square divided by n as equal to 119.24 and gd square by n you're going to get something called 113.74 and that subtraction is going to give you 5.56 so this is the entry here 5.56 ssa you have calculated 5.56 let's see how do you calculate ssw i'm going to use a different color altogether so let us calculate ssw this is square of each value and sum very simple so it is like 2 square plus 3 square plus 5 square plus 3 square plus 4 square plus 3 square plus 4 square plus 2 square so I'm summing each value with a square plus 6 square divided by nothing okay there is no division here in this particular thing let me clean it up and uh, then it is to be subtracted by what uh, I'm going to subtract it by tj square by n. I have already calculated it in the previous um, calculation. 119.34. If you see the sum, that comes out to be 128 minus 119.34, and that gives me 8.67. So I've got this entry 8.67. Now, since I'm clear about my sum of squares within, sum of squares amongst, what I'm going to use is I'm going to calculate now MSA. So MSA is simply given by SSA divided by respective degrees of freedom. So 
So uh, my MS SSA is 5.56. The corresponding degrees of freedom are 2. And when I calculate it, it comes out to be 2.78. So I get my MSA 2.78. Now I am going to calculate MS. Okay, let me change the color. So I'm going to calculate now M S W and that is exactly S S W divided by corresponding degrees of freedom. So uh, my S S W value is 8.67. My corresponding degrees of freedom are 6. I'm going to divide it by 6 and then gives me a value of 1.44. So that is 1.44. Now I'm going to simply calculate my F value, which is going to be MSA 2.78 by 1.44. And my F value here actually comes out to be 1.92. Now I'm going to check this F value with the F curve. So I'm going to remember this thing. I'm going to take it forward to the next slide and exactly see. Uh, or okay, I'll, I'll just see it on this slide and exactly see how this thing is going to work out. Now I'll calculate the degrees of freedom here. So I have two degrees of freedom in which I'm going to check uh, the F table. So I have two degrees of freedom amongst and six degrees of freedom within. Let me quickly show you a sample F table which you can clearly observe here. And if I see that, that uh, if you could recall, I was having two degrees of freedom amongst. Okay. No. Okay. I just have to clear it up once again. I'm sorry. So, if you see the configuration, the table was something like that. I was having uh, amongst like this. There were A, B, C, three groups. In this direction and in this direction I was having within there was first person second person and third person so if you see the degrees of freedom within were six these were within and amongst there were two degrees of freedom that was amongst You see that amongst two degrees of freedom within six degrees of freedom and you see the intersection is 5.14 that's how you see this uh, f table and f tables are different for each alpha value so this is the f table for alpha is equal to 0 0.05 let me get back i know it is the f value is 5.1433 so f curve is more or less like a chi square curve so where do i have this space i'm going to create an f curve here and I'm going to use a white color. So if I do a F distribution, something of that sort, then in that case I have a F critical, which I've just seen is 5.184, and this is my reason of rejection. And uh, here I go. Uh, I'm going to go all the way down. This here 1.92 somewhere here. This is zero. So my decision is do not reject H zero. This simply shows that uh, the difference or the fluctuation is purely a matter of chance and this evidence is not significantly telling me that I should reject my null hypothesis. That means all three drugs are uh, not different from each other, they are not causing a different impact and more or less they are same, right? They are, uh, the fluctuation in blood pressure because of these three drugs is not significantly different and that, that's how analysis of variance works in one way. Uh, next video I'll be talking about a two-way analysis of variance. Thank you.